Hello, 1P, and welcome back to your last lesson on algebra. We're going to be solving multi-step equations today, and that doesn't, that isn't as hard as it sounds. It just means that we've got a little bit of simplifying to do before we can actually solve the equations. So, I can solve equations that need to be simplified on one or both sides of the equal sign. So, let's have a look at that. Multi-step equations. Once again, sometimes equations need to be simplified before you can go about solving them. Uh, notice that this, and I'm going to highlight this, always simplify each side separately until there is at most two terms on each side. So we're going to collect like terms so that there's at most two terms on each side before we start solving. So here we go. Um, here's our, whoops. Okay, sorry about that. Um, we're going to take a look uh, at these ones and notice I've got written here in green. It says look at each side individually and put together any like terms, then solve. So let's have a look at each side individually. Well, this side only has one term, so there's nothing I can do over there. This side over here has four terms. Now we want at most two terms. That's what it said up here. At most two terms. Which means that there's something can be simplified over here. So if we take a look, we've got a 5x and a 2x. So I can simplify on that side. Now the first side stays the way it is, negative 12. And then I have a 2 and that's 5x and 2x go together to make 7x. So now that I have everything put together that can be put together on this side, now this just becomes a question of what I used to, what we've been doing for the last two days. Uh, I'm going to call this the home of the constants since it has only constants on that side, which leaves this side to be home of the variables. Um, home of the constants already has only constants on it, so I don't have to work on it. I go to the home of the variables though, and I gotta kick this two out. He does not belong, he does not have a variable, so I'm gonna kick that two out of there. Um, so when I kick that two out of there, I'm left with just seven X. But remember, if I kick the two off that side, I gotta kick two off this side too to keep, uh, keep the balance of the equation. And be careful with this, I've got 12 negatives and two negatives, which means I've got 14 negatives total. And now my last step is to divide these up to figure out what one X is worth. Um, and then I have to divide this side up the same way to keep the balance of the equation. So when I divide this up, those X's are gone, or those sevens are gone because seven divided by seven is one. And when we have a one in front of it, we don't usually write it. And negative 14 divided by seven is negative two. So our x is negative 2. And I could check that to see if I'm right. It wouldn't take much. Uh, let's take a look. Our left side is negative 12. And our right side has a whole bunch of stuff on it. We've got 2 plus 5 times x. But I think x is negative 2. So I'm going to plug that in where this x is. And then I'm going to add uh, 2 and then 2 has to times negative 2 because we've got 2 times x there. Remember that's what 2x means is 2 times x. So when I put this together I get 2 and 5 times negative 2 is um, negative 10 and then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 and so I've got 2 minus 10 is negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. And since I got negative 12 on both sides of the equation, that means I've got the right answer. So let's have a look at putting these together. Um, there's a big mess on both sides of the equation. Uh, so let's see, what can I put together on this side? Well, I can put together the 10x and the 9x. So this 10x and this 9x can go together to be 19x plus 34. And on the other side, I've only got one term with x's in it, but I have a 3 and a negative 5 I can put together. And 3 and negative 5 together is negative 2. And of course, I still have that x there, so plus x. Now I have at most two terms on each side. Now I can start adding 
or subtracting to both sides of the equation to get x by itself. Now I have to make that call first. I have to say this is my home of the variable and this is my home of the constant or vice versa, whichever way you want. Um, since this is the home of the variable, I get to kick out the constants. So I'm going to subtract 34 on this side and then I have to subtract 34 on this side as well. So this side becomes 19x and this side is negative 36 plus x. Now that I've got only variables in the home of the variable, I got to go over to the home of the constants and kick out my variables. Subtract x on that side, subtract x on that side. So what we have on this side is 18 because 19x and a negative x give me 18x's and on this side my x's are now gone, I've got negative 36. Now I have to figure out what 1x is worth. I know 18x's are worth negative 36, so to figure out 1, I gotta divide this side by 18, because 18 divided by 18 is 1, so I have just 1x, and then I have to divide that side by 18 as well. So this side is x, and then 30, negative 36 divided by 18 is negative 2. Next question expanding and simplifying before solving. So here we have some distributive law going on. So look at each side individually, use distributive law to expand the brackets and collect like terms then solve. So I'm going to expand these brackets first and 6 times 6x is 36x and then 6 times 6 gives me plus 36 and then I have that minus 5. This Distributive law doesn't apply to the minus 5 because it's not in the brackets. And the other side I have 1 plus 6x. This 1 plus 6x is fine the way it is. There's nothing, um, <coughs> nothing that I can put together over there. Now I can put this 36 and the negative 5 together on this side though. And I have to do that before I start adding and subtracting to both sides. So um, 36 minus 5 uh, is 31 and it's positive 31 and I still have this 36x on this side too. So on this side I have 1 plus 6x. Now I have to start adding and subtracting. This is my home of the variable and this is my home of the constant and so since this is home of the variable I get to kick out the constants. Minus 31 on that side, minus 31 on that side. This side becomes 36x. The other side if I put a positive 1 with a negative 31 I get negative 30 plus 6x. Now I move over to the other side. I have just variables in the home of the variable so I have to go over to the constants and kick out the variables. So minus 6x, minus 6x. And on this side 36x minus 6x is 30x and on this side those things are gone so I just have negative 30. And lastly I have to figure out what 1x is. Now I know 30x is equals negative 30, so I have to divide both sides by 30. And this side is x and the other side is simply negative 1. We're going to do that one more time over here. In fact, I want you to put me on pause and, uh, and figure it out yourself. See if you can do it and then unpause me and I'll go through this for you. Um, so put me on pause. Go ahead, do it. Come on, put me on pause. Okay, we're back. Um, this negative 11, nothing happens to it. It's not part of this uh, expression here. Um, but that, that 10 has to go through the brackets. So when I put the 10 through the brackets with distributive law, 10 times x is 10x. And then 10 times 10 is 100. So then I have a plus 100. On the other side, this 4, it's out here by itself. It's not part of the distributive law. But this negative 5 has to go through the brackets. And so I get negative 10x minus 55. Now I have to put together on each side whatever I can. I'm going to put down this equal sign right underneath this equal sign because I can't go across the equal sign until I've got everything simplified. So on this side I have a 10x and nothing's going with it. But the negative 11 and the positive 100 will go together to be positive 89. And over on this side, that negative 10x, it's not got anything to go with it. But this negative 55 and the positive 4, put them together and we get negative 51. 
Now I'm going to call this side the home of the variable and this side the home of the constant. So on this side, my home of the variable, I'm going to kick out the constants. Subtract 89 on that side, subtract 89 on that side. Okay, so on this side I just have 10 x's. Whoops, let me get my proper color here. On this side I have 10 x's, and on this side I have negative 10 x's and negative 140. So now this side, um, this side is all variables, so over on this side I want only constants, so I gotta kick out the variables, plus 10 x, and on this side I gotta add 10 x as well to keep the piece. And so this side becomes 20 x, and over on this side I get negative 140, and now I'm gonna divide both sides by 20. Why am I dividing both sides by 20? Because I know what 20 x's are, I want 1 x. So I divide by 20 to get a 1 in front of the x, and on the other side I'm going to have negative 7. Now, example 3 says fabulous fencing, and it also says EQAO prep. So this is a question that you might find on the EQAO test at the end of the year. This says, Pauline builds a fence around her garden that is shaped like a parallelogram as shown. If she uses a hundred meters, that should say meters there, M-E-T-R-E-S, of fencing along the perimeter of the garden, find the dimensions of the garden. So the perimeter is the distance around, and remember a parallelogram has opposite sides the same length. So we know that the perimeter is 100 meters because it says she uses 100 meters of fencing to go all the way around and I know that we have two sides like this so I'm going to write that as 2 times x minus 10 because I know this side over here is x minus 10 as well and then I have to add the other two sides, which is x plus 20, and there's two of them. 2 times x plus 20. And so this is the perimeter. If you wanted to, you could have just added them all up, but it's much easier to just double the two sides. And that has to equal 100. So now I'm going to multiply the 2 through the brackets and I'm going to multiply this 2 through the brackets, and then I'll simplify when I'm done. So there's quite a lot of simplifying on this side. This side says equals 100. There's nothing to simplify over on that side. So I'm just going to take a look at this side here. 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. Then when I look at this bracket, I'm going to do 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 20 gives me plus 40 and that equals 100. Now if I collect like terms, I've got two x's and two x's, which means I have four x's in total, and I also have negative 20 and positive 40. So if I have negative 20 and positive 40, I have positive 20, and that equals 100. Now, I've got this as simple as I can get it. Remember, at most two terms. So I've got two terms on here, and they won't go together. So now what I have to do is get just the variables by itself. And since this side is already home of the constants, and all by itself, I just need to get only variables on this side. So if I want only variables on this side, I'm going to have to subtract 20 off of that side to get rid of that constant, and I have to subtract 20 off of this side as well. So this side is 4x, because those negative 20, that positive 20 is gone, and on this side is 80. And then we have to divide both sides by 4. Why are we dividing by 4? Well, it's because I want 1x, and 4 divided by 4 gives me 1 on that side. So I have x equals, and then 80 divided by 4 is 20. Now, have we answered the question, x equals 20? Uh, this actually says find the dimensions of her garden, so I have to know what each side is. So let's see, she's got this side is x minus 10, well I think x is 20, so this side length is going to be 20 minus 10, or 10, and this lengthwise here has to be 20 
plus 20. Remember this 20 here is our x term. Okay. And 20 plus 20 equals 40. So therefore, her garden is 20, oh, 10 meters, right here, 10 meters by 40 meters. So 10 meters by 40 meters. And that concludes today's lesson.